explain things as we go. All right. So the first thing, guys, is when we're looking at identifying the, uh, the, the relative max and mins here, we're looking at is this function co continuous, right? And we could say that, yes, it's a polynomial, so it looks kind of nice and continuous. The next thing we want to do is kind of find our critical values. But again, we want to make sure we're finding critical values as far as our critical values that are in the domain. So to find our critical values, I'm going to enter, find my derivative which is 3x squared minus 3x. Bring down the 2, those divide out, and I get to there. Correct? Now, to find the critical values, I'm going to set this equal to 0. And I have 3x squared minus 3x. I can factor out a 3x. And I'm left with an x minus 1. Therefore, my critical values are x equals 0 and x equals 1. This should not be the difficult portion of this assignment. Everybody's OK with what I did there. Those are the critical values that are on the domain, that are in, involved in the domain. Is everybody OK with that? OK. So now, what we need to do is, what we're saying by the first derivative test is, these could be the extrema. These could be a local, their relative max or min. They could be. But the thing is, they could be relative. We don't know which one's which. We don't just want to plug in our values and say, that's our relative max or that's our min. What we have to do is use the first derivative test. So we, what we have to do is kind of see how are things changing from to the left of these to the left of the point and to the right of the point. So if you look at the graph, like here's zero and here's one, like what's happening to the left of the point to the right? Wouldn't you guys agree if the slope was positive, then changes to negative, that would be a max, right? And wouldn't you guys agree if the slope was negative and then turned to positive, that would be a min, right? So based on that information, we got to kind of determine what's happening to the left and to the right of each of those points. So to do that, we're going to create a table. Um, so we're going to say x and then f prime. You could say f prime of x or f prime. So we have these kind of, we want to know what's happening to the left and the right of 0 and what's happening to the left and the right of 1. Okay. So to the left of 0, a good number. And again, you guys want to keep this simple. You don't want to do crazy numbers. A good number to pick to the left of 0, let's do negative 1. Between 0 and 1, let's do 1 half. And outside to the right of 1, let's do 2. Now again, all we care about is what is the slope. We don't care what the value of the slope is. We just want to know, is the slope positive or is it negative? Okay. So we type in negative 1 into our derivative here. So negative 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And then negative times negative is positive. So therefore, I'd have a positive plus a positive. So that's going to give me a positive. Right? If I chose 1 half, 1 half squared would be 1 fourth. Therefore, that would be 3 fourths minus 3 halves. So what's bigger, 3 fourths or 3 halves? 3 halves. So if you're taking a smaller number and subtracting a larger number, this is now going to be negative or positive? Negative. Okay. And then let's plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times um, 3 is 12. Minus 6, that's going to be positive. So what's happening is maybe it kind of looks maybe something like this. What's happening with the graph? is to the left of negative uh, of 0, the graph is increasing. right? That's a positive slope. Between 0 and 1, the graph is decreasing, negative slope. And then from 1 on, the graph is increasing. Do you guys see that? Now, we don't just want to say this and say, oh, we're done. We have to, when we're using our justification or they're asking for our stream and justify, we have to make sure we're explaining it. So this is what I want you guys to write down for each of these. Um, so we're going to say f has a local max at x equals 0 since f prime of x changes from positive to negative 
at x equals 0. So again, look at my reasoning. Look what I'm doing. I'm saying f has a local max, local max at x equals 0. I'm telling you where the value is. Since I'm explaining, because the derivative, using the first derivative test, changes from positive to negative. Don't just say, oh, yeah, it's at the maximum, you know, they, like, because it's 5, that's highest. No, like you need to tell, you need to explain why it's going to be the local max, local min. You could also say f as a local min at x equals 1 since f prime of x changes from negative to positive at x equals 1. Okay. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention is another thing we could ask is the increasing, decreasing intervals. We could also say, when is the graph, like, here's the local max and min by the first derivative test. But couldn't we also say when the graph is increasing? We could also talk about when the graph is increasing. And guys, the important thing is the graph changes. What I want you guys to see is the graph changes from increasing to decreasing at our extrema. Do you guys see that? The extrema is a change in your increasing, decreasing intervals, which I didn't write down for you guys, which I'll go back to. So we can say f is increasing. I'm going to write that on negative infinity to 0 union what was that 1 to infinity. Those are the intervals that the function is increasing. We're not using including excluding like for increasing decreasing intervals, we usually don't need to include brackets or parentheses. It's just assumed that you're talking about like all the points are included. And then we could say f is decreasing on 0 to 1. Anybody have any questions on what I did, why I did it, how I did it?